Hey, what's going on everyone? Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of The Power of Storytelling. Today we have Cameron Macias on with us. He is a business consultant and financial coach. If you guys do enjoy this conversation, make sure to leave a like and follow on whatever platform you're listening on. Let's get into the conversation. I do want to say thank you, um, Cam, for, for hopping on and, and joining us on this episode of The Power of Storytelling. Usually what I like to do to start off is just allow you to kind of introduce yourself, kind of talk about what you do, and we'll kind of just go from there. Uh, so Cam, Cameron Macias, Coach Cam, Killer Cam, depending on what time of my life you met me. <laughs> um, but uh, I am a business consultant slash financial coach. Um, currently, I am still uh, active military. I retired in about four years. Um, but because of the nature of my job, uh, I was afforded kind of the opportunity where I have a good amount of time to really prepare for retirement. Uh, so very fortunate there. So been a certified coach for about two years now, always been into finances and business. And so that's what I do to really kind of help people to help my circle is I try and help level up, you know, because I think too many times we don't surround ourselves with enough people who are having those types of conversations. And I think a lot of people ask that question, like, how do people get to this level? Well, a lot of it starts with your circle. And so uh, I'm in the business of building those circles. That's and awesome. so uh, that's who I am. <laughs> that's awesome and yeah um how did you uh my dad's in the air force as well i do want to say first off i uh, thank you for your service that's awesome appreciate it <laughs> um how did you end up wanting to join the military was it something that you've always wanted to do or is it something that just kind of happened so uh i am not the most studious person in the world uh very smart uh but um if it doesn't interest me as far as learning's concerned then like my attention goes elsewhere and so growing up you know, the um, traditional, you know, education method just like really wasn't the best for me. And so, you know, as I grew up high school, my grades really weren't that great. I just kind of barely skated by. Uh, I was actually told like my senior year of high school, like, hey, uh, you're not going to graduate. And like, I was one of the only kids, you know, I'm in California. So four, you know, out of 400 kids, I was one of the only people that wasn't going to graduate. And it wasn't due like due to attendance or, you know, I was causing ruckus. I just, I was the kid that like did my homework and didn't turn it in. For sure. And so um, my uncle was in the Air Force and I had already signed up for it because my mom was like, look, I love you, but uh, you can't stay here when you graduate. You know, she, I had a single mom, I'm my only child. And so she's like, hey, you know, you like, I'm not going to support you as an adult. Like you get a job, you pay rent, you go to school get a job, pay rent. And she said, but, uh, and as much as I love you, I just don't feel as though college may be the best option right now. Um, you know, because of your academic record in high school. And so hit up the air force, man, I still had the recruiter's card in my pocket from when he had come to the school, you know, uh, did my test pretty sure to this day, he was probably shocked that I passed it. Cause I did not look like somebody who could probably pass the test, unfortunately. Sure. And, um, but yeah, man, I always say I was kind of the easiest recruit because, you know, I only needed, I needed three things. I needed a roof over my head. I needed money in my pocket and I needed food in my belly. And so I said, Hey man, look, if you can guarantee me those three things, I'll do whatever you need me to do. And I only want to leave at the end of summer so I can spend my last summer with my friends. That's awesome. And he was like, cool. So I left 18 years old, barely, uh, 16 and a half years later. Um, here I am. That's awesome. And what, what are some of the things that you've kind of taken with you through, you know, going through the military and your time there that is still like kind of holds true today? I know you're still in it, but what are mm -hmm. some of those things? Um, I think one of the biggest things is like, don't write people off too quick. Mm -hmm. I think there's a balance. So like a lot of the, like kind of the business cons uh, consulting speeches I gave and things like that is, you know, you don't want to give up on your people, but at the same time, you also have to acknowledge when there's just too much effort being put forward. Um, and so like myself, I did not make very smart decisions when I was younger, um, while I was in the military. However, I worked really hard and I did really care. I was just like stupid, you know, prior to 21 year old age kid. And so I was fortunate enough where people were like, they had my back. People saw the light. They're just like, Cam needs to have <clears throat> like this light bulb go off because he has the ability. It's just right now he's not using like his intelligence for good. And so uh, that was one of the biggest things. Like just, you know, really kind of see the good in people, but don't fabricate the good in people. For sure. Unfortunately, there's billions of people. I, you know, I love the phrase, like everybody's got good in them. Some people just really 
they're not that great and that's okay yeah there's that double-edged sword where you want to you want to look for the good in people but some people they'll abuse it you know they'll, they'll take advantage of it and sometimes mm -hmm. it leaves you worse off that's awesome and um you know going how did like how did you transition into this part of you know you're helping people out financially and kind of help them educate people what made you mm -hmm. want to kind of get into this position rather than just staying in your the, like the normal position within the military um good question so i always thought i wanted to be a recruiter when i got out so I, so i'm i'm actually I'm, i don't think i said that earlier i'm actually a, i am a recruiter for the air force um okay. I recruit people to get out of the Air Force to go part time, though. So I work for like the the National Guard. I work for the Air Air Force version of it. So I always thought I wanted to be a recruiter when I got out, and you know I loved it. I loved helping people. You know the process, all those types of things. And during COVID, I got the unique opportunity to kind of create my own like digital recruiting agency, mm -hmm. and so I dove into that world. And what I realized is that. I didn't want to do it anymore yeah. when I left the, when I left the military, it was, excuse me. Um, one of the things, so I'm like a weird, I'm like a, I always say I'm a weird, um, like mix because I really enjoy rules, but I also live in the gray area, which is why I love recruiting, which is why finances are cool because there's not one way, all those types of things. The part of recruiting that I liked, um, was that, as long as someone met the qualifications, I could help them have a better life. For sure. If they met the test scores, if they, you know, were physically fit enough, if they took a position with us, I could change that person's life. Um, the gray area of it though, is that you could also like find waivers and things like that. But at the end of the day, as long as the waiver got approved and the person qualified, they could be in the military, change their life civilian sector obviously does not work like that mm -hmm. you know um doesn't matter if you qualify it doesn't matter if you know john in accounting you know it doesn't matter if you're overqualified for the position they can just say no and that's it and so um that didn't sit well with the better nature of my heart <laughs> so mm -hmm. Um, it was cool because I got pushed into coaching because of that. Uh, I used to run a pod a previous podcast and the one I do now, uh, called scared money. Don't make money. It was all about recruiting, marketing, you know, sales, everything. And, um, I was fortunate enough where I met a, uh, executive coach. So CEO, C-suite coach. And, um, he came on the podcast, we talked afterwards and he said, Hey, you know, I, I would really like to do some like pro bono coaching with you. Cause he, he called me about coaching. I said, Hey man, you're dope, but I don't, I don't got money like that. Like sure. I know you're at least $300 an hour. And he's like, yeah, but I actually, I'm actually 500, but I want to do it for free because like you're young and you have great energy and I want to be a part of like your success story. Wow. And so that's why I talk about it a lot. And so, um, he actually pushed me towards becoming a coach. Um, and he's like, you know, with your recruiting skills, with your people skills, I think you could really help a lot of people. And I said, all right, cool. And so, um, I became, I went through that whole process is about a year long to, to get like legitimately certified, not just like change my Facebook profile, but yeah, <laughs> so, right. um, so I started doing that. And then what I realized is that with my experience in business, my experience in finances, that was where I could be of most help to society. Um, you know, I'm good at talking to people. I'm good at, I'm good with feelings and things like that, but where my true, like, you know, bread and butter is it's, it's helping people map out business strategy, um, financing, you know, retirements and things like that. Um, cause I can just be like super blunt. And right. sometimes with coaching, you like, you can't really be blunt because <laughs> it's all about the person. You're not really supposed to kind of offer advice, <laughs> which is, um, it can be hard. <laughs> and so that's kind of how I slid into that, man. And, and um, it's been lovely, honestly. It's that's, been way, it way more serves my purpose. That's awesome. And so uh, now that we're, we're on a podcast here and kind of talking about, it, I can't ask you about <laughs> it. Um, you know, giving advice to those people, whether they're running a business or, you know, something that you've seen throughout helping people, what are some of those things that you see that hold people back when it comes to expanding their business or, like expanding their portfolio for like their net worth and stuff. Yeah. Uh, first thing, limited mindset. Okay. Um, so I'll be, so I will tell you the other day, um, I had a business meeting with who's now someone who's a business partner and 
you know, it was funny because they they almost uh, they almost tricked me. They were like, hey, I want to I want to I want a coaching, you know, session, you know, you know, how much is it? I, you know, I told him um, he said, cool, we scheduled it. We did it. And so they were going through this business idea that they have um, because they're very much an expert where they are at. For sure. um, but business is not that they don't have time for it. And it's just not a thing of theirs. So they bring the talent, the expertise in this particular industry. They don't bring the business and finance know how. And so we're like going through this whole thing and he's a um, very smart guy. So he's, you know, you know, some people are like, they're just bouncing ideas. You know, it's like Elon Musk, like yeah. idea, 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 idea. And one of the things I am really good at is I can, I can take all of that in and organize it for somebody. For sure. And so that's exactly what I did for him. And he, and he said, um, I'm going to be really honest with you. I didn't need your business coaching. He said, I've, I've thought this idea out 10 times up, 10 times down and back. But everything that you just did, I could never do that myself. For sure. Um, and he said, so this was actually more of a business proposition because I want, it was like a test and a business proposition right. because in his mind, he was like, if Cam can organize this, then he's the person I need on my team mm -hmm. because he can hear all my thoughts and make it a reality. Yeah. And so um, that's what we did, man. And so, and that's, that's kind of like, how I help people realistically for sure. um, and what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Do you think it's important? Cause I, I, I see that a lot too. You know, people have a ton of ideas, but all mm -hmm. of those ideas don't mean anything until you apply them. You know, you put a practical business model or, you know, a plan, mm -hmm. you don't set that plan. You So once you set that plan, you actually start doing those. I feel like that's kind of a big thing that holds people back as well. Do you have any tips to kind of help do what you do so well, whenever it comes to planning, like, is there anything out there that you've used or some techniques that you've used? Um, yeah, my bad. I need, I need to finish my thought on the previous one For too. Sure. So the reason I said all that was because while we were talking, I never once was like, Oh, well you can't do that. Or you can't do this. I was just like, Oh, we could, we could do this with that. Or we could. And he said, and like he said, the limited mindset thing, he For said, sure. you're the first person that hasn't tried to tear down this idea. Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong. There's, you know, that doesn't mean every idea is going to come to fruition, but you got to like, you can't set your own limitations on, well, I couldn't, I can't do that because I don't have money or I can't do that. And don't get me wrong. I get that money. Like, you're not all of a sudden going to like own a Mercedes Benz dealership. Like you do need money, but <laughs> you know, but you can start ground level and start creating network, you know, things like that. Um, so as far as tips to like do what I'm doing, um, you have to be really honest with the situation. I think that's honestly one of the hardest things for young entrepreneurs and business owners to really, to really think about is that everybody loves to make it look like they do it on their own. No one does. Right. I don't. Yep. My friends think, my friends think for sure as hell I do. They're like, how do you have time and all the day? I have people that do work for me. Yep. I have people, you know, because I'm realistically, I work, I have two full-time positions right now. And so and I have, and I have five kids in my, I have five kids in my house oh, wow. and I have a wife and I got two dogs, you know, I got friends. I, you know, I need some alone time to myself, all those things. And so, um, you know, being honest with like what you can and can't do and, and can't, I think people get wrapped up in like, oh, it's not that you can't do it. It's just like, if you really want to concentrate on the things that are going to make your business successful, you can't afford to post to your social media every day. Yeah, you only have so much time in the day. You know, you only got so much time in the day, man. And so I think too many, um, too many, you know, and that's what like my new business part of that was one of the things he said is, you know, and I told him straight up, I said, hey, man, you know, because I, I was originally a customer as well. And I said, I'm gonna be honest with you, if it wasn't for speaking to you, I would have never been a customer yeah. because your social media that um, uh, showed off your product or, you know, your artwork was not great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was only when I met you in person and you showed me the other stuff that you never posted was when I was sold on being a customer of yours. And, but he, but he was honest with himself. He said, you know what? I tried to do it by myself for the last 10 years and it took me a while, but I understood, you know what? I'm good at this and I need someone good at that. 
It's awesome. And yeah, so like delegating some of that work that you know that you don't have time for, you know that someone else is either better at or, you know, mm-hmm. that can also do the do just as good of a job. <clears throat> delegating that time so that you can stick to what you're really good at and focusing on the things that you are. That's awesome. Um, yeah. And I, I know, of course, that you said you got a, you got a house recently. Congratulations mm-hmm. on that. What are yeah, some, thank you. Yeah, what are some tips? Because uh, I know you're kind yeah. of in this field in a sense, but what are some tips for for someone trying to either look into getting a you know a new home or getting something? I, was is it a rental property? Is it a house that you're going to be living in? So, so both. So it's okay. both a vacation house for my family and I, um, but we will also Airbnb. You know, Airbnb it, Verbo it, whatever. Mm-hmm. What um what are some of those tips that you have for for someone looking to either get into a rental property or a home of their own? Um, man, that's, that can go so many yeah, different sure. ways. So, so no, no, you're fine. I, I like those. Um, so the biggest thing or not the biggest thing, but one of the, one of the things is like, be honest about the situation. Mm-hmm. Once again, I'm all like, I feel like honest, honestly, if you're honest with most situations, like to the blunt pros and cons it and you have to speak it i think that's where people really mess up when they're doing any type of investing especially with like with real estate and so forth is like they don't talk it out verbally um you know there's plenty there's a lot of studies that have been done that said strictly by verbalizing things your brain processes it in a whole different way and so you know this was a big thing with coaching um i have had some of the biggest revelations in coaching just repeating what somebody said and then hearing it and then going like Oh God, is that what I sound like? And I'm just like, Hey man, you said it. I didn't. And so, um, anyways, looking at property, you have to be realistic about what is the pros and cons of it. What is the time investment going to be? What are the potential downfalls? What does the market look like? Um, you know, everybody thinks that you just buy real estate and be rich. It's all about positioning. Timing is everything, you know, um, and that's just not with real estate. That's with finances in general. You know, 2008, really bad for some people, amazing for other people, you know, because timing. And so, you know, like with the, like with our property, for instance, you know, we bought a property that we could afford <clears throat> to pay the mortgage on top of our other bills if we made no money on it. Yeah. Because that's a possibility for sure of course we think it's a great idea of course we think it's a great house um you know the views dope go check my instagram but um what if no one else does you know and that's what i mean that being honest thing right are we still happy with this purchase if we never made a dollar off it and i and my wife and i yes we are 100 percent happy with the purchase we love the house we love the property the location everything um that being said the work that goes behind it i've been already like hey look at this house i just bought like how how much would you airbnb this for you know because i i service a lot of military folks yeah. and so those are going to be a lot of my clientele i can't price an airbnb at 600 dollars a night but that's not how we rock in the military yeah, you know right. so i went to the source i asked you know a military wife um spouse hey how much would you feel comfortable if your husband said hey um, let's go do this Airbnb. She's like, oh, I'd pay 250 for that. She, oh, actually, excuse me. First, she said, oh, I might be a bad example. I'm cheap. Mm-hmm. And I said, no, that's, that's you're a perfect example because I want to know what's the bare minimum. And she said 250 an hour or 250 a day, excuse mm-hmm. me. I was like, I would have been happy with 150. Right. Like I, I've already done the cost analysis as far as what it costs. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, but now that we have the house, it's my wife and I's job now to, market it and you know and if no one gets it no big deal but i can tell you i'm pretty good at what i do i've been doing about nine years and i probably already got about like a month or two sold at this point (laughs) that's awesome yeah um you know talking about the the honesty aspect as well you doing that research you're you're figuring out honestly is this a good investment you know your your risk management and you know making sure that it's cost effective i think that's something that a lot of people are afraid to do because they don't want to be honest with themselves so either they they dive in and they are in a bad investment or they just stay away from it completely so i think i think that that's a that's great um i I like to ask this as well you know what are some some current goals for yourself and what are you what are your future goals as well um i hate saying um I've done so much training where like 
they count our ums in recruiting school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so first of all, big goals. With this summer coming up, spend a lot of time with my family. Nice. That's a big thing. You know, the last year has been relatively busy for me. Not to the point where I feel like I am neglecting my family of such, but I really like to spend summers with them. I uh, Most people think it's funny. They're like, man, you really take a seat. Like you take a back seat to a lot of things during the summer. I say, yeah, because I want to spend time with my kids. Sure. You know, they're out of school and stuff like that. So that's first goal. It's like to spend time with the fam. Second thing, get this, this house, man, up yeah. and running. Yep. And the nice thing about the house is that the business opportunity for Airbnb is already Airbnb, Verbo, whatever is already there, but there are second and third opportunities that are attached to that already other business opportunities. So really, you know, turning those into reality as far as the other business opportunities. Uh, third thing is, you know, my podcast, I want to get to um, a thousand subscribers. Oh, nice. Yeah. Cool. That's, <laughs> after after the next you know within the within the by the end of the year awesome what's the name of the podcast uh the l3 perspective uh, it's so it stands for uh life love and leadership and so shout out to my boy glenn <laughs> and so hey, uh, there we go. So, so we do that and you know uh it's on youtube spotify everything and we have a lot of these conversations like just real raw honest conversations mm -hmm. you know about how life love and leadership really kind of navigate you know every day that we're doing and so Part of that is, you know, and that's another piece of that, you know, what work is required, you know, like I do a lot of the editing for that, um, but I don't do all the posting because I'm like editing and getting it up and doing it, That's enough for me. Mm -hmm. So I hire someone that chops it up and does all that. And that's another thing, like partner, having partners to help you. Like I said, no one does it. And it's so it's not just having people who do are doing things for you. It's people that are doing things with you. Yeah. Um. So, you know having your team you know so glenn my podcast partner you know we are not just podcast co-hosts we are business partners our families hang out i trust you know i trust the, him he trusts me and so and then like my wife for instance my wife is a is a business partner of mine too you know we keep it in the family you know i'm i do finance she does real estate so you know we that those are those perfect. are those, those are perfect man and so um but those are kind of those are some of my main goals right now. I don't like to go too hard. Like some people are like, oh, I want this, 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 this. And I'm like, all right, man. Like, uh, but I understand, especially now, this later, this late in my career, is that if I hit those four main goals, the other goals that I don't talk about necessarily, those are all fall into place because sure. opportunities are attached to those goals. That's awesome. And yeah, speaking on that, what are some things that you've learned throughout, you know, your career and 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 doing all these things that helped you because you know you need balance you need that you have mm. your family you have you know things other things that you like to do what are some things that you've learned to help you balance out your work and your personal life time management but i feel like everybody says that yeah right um once again being honest with the time management so i'll give you you know i'm, I'm big on examples because i mm -hmm. hate people to just talk and don't give examples so uh well not hate that's a strong word but you know i get it <laughs> uh so I have to find a balance between, you know, what I do for the military along with what I do for my civilian life. And I found that I was not sticking to one parts of my schedule on certain days because on those certain days, certain activities happen regularly. Yeah. So I had to be honest and sit back and say, okay, I'm not getting this done when I established that I was going to get this done what's what's the thing that i can change here well i can change the activity that i had planned during that time or day so then i reevaluate my schedule and move it around now things get done when they're supposed to yeah. you know so that constant reevaluation man as far as time management is concerned uh you know be once again being honest yeah. whether it's with yourself or with your partner uh, you know i did a podcast episode about saying no to yourself yeah you know, it's, it's really easy to get wrapped up in the, I want to do everything because I want to be successful because I want to be, have all the money in the world. That shit sucks, man. If you're depressed or bec if you have no time to take a break, if you, you know, have a breakdown, I've seen it, yeah. seen it, you know, <laughs> like, and, and, and I'm like, Hey man, I, uh, 
I told you, you got to slow, slow that down, bro. Yeah. And so, and then if you have a partner, telling them what you need and what you don't need, telling them when you tell them when you don't appreciate something and when you do yep. me and my wife, we have those conversations. Like, I, you know, I'll be like, yo, I need this. I need that. She'd be like, yo, I need this. I need that. I'm like, cool. Let's meet in the middle, bro. Yep. You know, Hey, I got to do a meeting at seven o'clock or six o'clock at night. Dinner's on you, homie yep. <laughs> and vice versa, you know, but, um, so communication yeah, really huge. That's awesome. Um, I will kind of end it here. I know I don't want to take up too much of your time, of course. Uh, if you can yeah. talk to yourself, you know, talk to your younger self, what is mm -hmm. one of those pieces of advice that has kind of helped you get to where you're at now and that would help you in the future? Protect your energy. Okay. Big on energy. Yeah. So people like myself in particular, we think the world of the world uh i once had a friend who told me the world will not burn down because of people like you and it will burn down because of people like it would it would burn down because of people like me and he's a great person it's not a bad person yeah. at all one of my one of my best friends but his you know give a f level was pretty low yeah. um as with as is with a lot of people in society right and I was the person who bared a lot of the responsibility for teams or work centers or, you know, I just want this person to be great. Why don't they want to be great themselves? Right. Like, and just, just internalizing all of that. Only in the recent years have I understood what it truly is to protect your energy. It doesn't mean giving up on people and because that's, I'll never stop. I'll never stop believing in people, but it does uh, require you to be able to release yourself of responsibility of things. Yeah. Kind of. And I, th what's that? Oh, no, you can keep going. I was just going no, to no, interject. No. Um, I was just basically saying that kind of ties into that double edged sword that we were talking about before, you Correct. know, thinking too much or trying to, to find the good in people when they're just not showing mm -hmm. you that, you know, they'll take advantage of it for as long as they can. Um, I mean, yeah, I definitely agree. Were you going to keep going there? I was just going to say, yeah, I mean, no, that's, that's a very good synopsis of what I was going to say pretty much is just, yeah, you have to, you have to protect your energy. You have to protect your skills. And that doesn't necessarily mean like hoard it where you don't mm -hmm. try things out. It's just, uh, you have to be a little bit particular <clears throat> of where you are expending your energy for sure, and how much. Yeah. Right. That's awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for, for hopping on. I really do appreciate it. Um, yeah. Is there anything else you want to say? I do want to say, go ahead and give a, a shout out to your Instagram or your social media and then whatever else you're doing here too. Oh, for sure, man. No, I appreciate it. You, you, I, I, lo I love getting hit up because I'm usually the guy that hits up people like, hey, you want to come on? So um, very thankful, very appreciative of being here. Uh, so you guys can check me out. Uh, Coach Cam Macias on Instagram, Coach Cam Macias on TikTok. Uh, you can find me at my business profile at Forward Learning Group on um, Facebook. Cameron Macias on LinkedIn. Uh, I post across all my platforms. Uh, our podcast, The L3 Perspective, is on all platforms, YouTube, uh, Spotify, uh, yeah, every, uh, Apple Podcasts, everything. Uh, check us out. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you'd like to be a guest and or if you know a guest that you think would be beneficial to you know our audience because that's what we're all about. And I'm a normal dude, man. So just hit me up. Send me a message. You got questions or you got ideas or you got feedback. I'm, I'm open to all of it. Just don't, just don't slide in being a jerk. And then at that point you get, you get mean cam. I know I don't look like it, but <laughs> it's in there somewhere. It's in there. It's, it's there's, there's, I got a line right here for a reason, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. man. well, thank you so much for being on once again. And uh, we'll talk to you later, man. All right, brother. I appreciate you. Yep.